With 4 million sounds, what will you create? Take the free trial today. Hello YouTube, welcome to a new Synth Anatomy video from the Superbooth 20 Home Edition. I'm here on the line with Gustav from Elk. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Nice are, you still are you still healthy and creative during this special time? Yeah, we're, we're still healthy. Um, trying to, the whole team has been working uh, from home for like a month and a half now, but uh, mm -hmm. we're trying to do the best of the, of the situation. And um, your company, Elk Audio, is based in? We're based in Stockholm. In Stockholm. Yeah. So in, in the country or in the city where many music tech companies are. Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. Like Stockholm turned out some sort of music tech hub there. How many people are working for Elk Audio? Or um, from Elk Audio, we, I think we're about a little bit over ten people. Um, okay, counting everyone, including a few a few students and, and interns. Um, mm -hmm. And um, which are your backgrounds? Are you software developers of music uh, also of music software already, or are you newcomers in this? section i was just saying i mean most of us are, are software developers um mm -hmm. the original originally we, we changed our name from elk to elk from mind music labs about mm -hmm. a year ago um kind of switching direction um before that we were doing this uh, smart guitar which is a pretty pretty mm -hmm. cool and innovative product um but now we're doing elk which is the the operating system mm -hmm. and before uh, creating this company you worked all in different other music tech companies or is your background some in music? did um i think everyone in the company has some sort of musical background in the sense that they like music they play music record and produce music um some of us i mean some of us has some background in the music tech business um i didn't i, I came from a consultant background um, but um, I think it's the love of music and technology that has, has brought us all together and and you bring something new to the table uh, something innovative and I think something what is quite special and needed because we have the technology today and it's not really see or not possible yet but with your technology I think it's become possible to bring plugins to hardware yeah, because always people said, "Oh, I really love this plugin, but it doesn't exist in hardware. I would love to have it." Um, I yeah. think Elk Audio is doing something that helps developers a lot. Can you give me there maybe a, a little overview? Yeah, um, the main overview is that Elk is it's an operating system for it's a music operating system, an operating system for musical devices. If that is synthesizers or drum machines, or it can even be uh, digital mixing consoles, anything where you need uh, super stable, um, low latency audio processing. Um, and it also runs, it runs plugins in the form of VST2, VST3, um, LV2 plugins. Mm -hmm. And it can run, if you have a plugin that is built for Windows or Mac, uh, you can basically just take it, recompile the code for our platform and put it in a box, put a keyboard on it, some knobs and sliders, and there you have you have your plugin mm -hmm. running on a hardware platform. And uh, what and is also great for, for software developers that want to do hardware versions and software versions because you can use the same code base for, for the hardware and the software. There's no need to rewrite the software for say specialized DSP chips or anything so like that. So basically, when the software or the plugin is made in C++ or in other code, it's compatible. So they yeah, yeah. And um, is there some obstacle or um, what they need to know developers if they want to compile their or make them the plugins ready for this platform, uh, the extra work, or do, is it something where this made quite simple or easy? It's usually quite, quite simple. I mean, there, there is a few things that developers need to think about. I mean, one, one of the main thing being that the plugins need to be headless and that they need to run without 
the GUI without the editor. Um, but if you have a good separation between the processing, audio processing part and the editor part of your code, then that should be no problem. Um, mm -hmm. And there's also some issues of real-time safety that is already an issue when you're running plugins on, on, on a Windows or Mac computer, but it mm -hmm. becomes even more an issue. But for most of the plugin developers that we have had conversations with or that we have helped, I mean, it's a matter of a day or two to get a plugin can, running okay. on else. Can you go, give it's us not. maybe a little overview or not overview, I said, um, how powerful this environment is because some plugins take more CPU, other less, yeah. and some are more efficient um, developed. Um, what uh, what plugin works fine on this uh, this platform, or what um, uh, or more is, uh, CPU hacks? Uh, is it possible to uh, to bring this to this Elk Audio platform, or is it maybe a a big challenge? I The amount of, of the, the power depends on what, what CPU you're running on. So Elk is not, it's not operating system, so it's not tied to any particular CPU. We have support for several ARM-based or x86-based uh, processor. But the cool thing with Elk is that Elk runs this dual kernel setup where you have a real-time kernel running the audio processing. Mm -hmm. So you can actually give the audio processing higher priority than anything else in the system so that you can use all the all the cpu power that you have at your disposal you can put it to okay. good use in in computing the audio um but to give you some i mean for the raspberry pi 3 based we've run the the obxd for instance which is a pretty cool uh, open source synthesizer mm -hmm. um oberheim oberheim obx uh, clone mm -hmm. um and that runs fine with yeah at least six I, last year we saw at super booth a bit um hidden or hidden in the steinberg booth you yeah. created already the retro log we can yeah. see it also as hardware yeah, unit and yeah. so basically there inside this box because um often the people ask what is inside so it's basically there is this um a Raspberry Pi plus yeah. this ALK operating system which is powered with the inside the box here. Yeah. That one is actually not running the Raspberry Pi. Um, it could okay. have been running the Raspberry Pi, but it's running an x86 okay. uh, Intel Atom-based uh, CPU instead. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's basically, it's it's the entire plugin, um, the Retrolog 2 plugin from Steinberg. Mm -hmm. um, And we had a little bit of email back and forth, help them set everything up. But basically, they they recompiled it for Elk. Um, we built a box around it and okay. put it in there. So that is that is the entire plugin running uh, in hardware. Okay. And so, so you say now it, it's not um, it doesn't work here in the Retrolog. It doesn't work on the Raspberry Pi. So it's compatible also with other platform with other um, yeah it, it will work on the on the Raspberry Pi uh, I'm pretty sure of it mm -hmm. it was just some design choices at the time um, okay. I think the the x86 board that we had was more powerful than the Raspberry Pi three that we okay. had at the time but now we have Raspberry Pi four uh, and also Elk support for Raspberry Pi four came out just mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks um, and the Raspberry Pi four is actually pretty easy. Pretty hard. Yeah. So that that would be a good choice. But um, you you worked um, already with a famous guitarist or with a band in the past yeah. with Muse. Yeah, Muse, Matt Bellamy from. And there's also the technology inside, right, in his guitar. Yeah, that was How... a pretty cool thing that came out of. I think it was Nam um, last year. Um, so it's it's a collaboration between us, uh, Fishman, the, the pickups, and Arturia. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's an elk board built into um, built into metal guitar. They actually mm -hmm. rooted out a pocket on the backside to put an elk board into it, and it's the Fishman triple play MIDI pickup. And then Arturia uh, recompiled their Prophet VS synthesizer. Okay. Um, For elk, and then we just put it all together. And 
How is um, the on stage? That's how was that was the latency? How was the latency of it? Because of uh -huh. it, because you play the guitar and then it goes to the uh, the software and then out. There's yeah. probably a bit of latency, right? There is a bit of I don't have any numbers of the top of my head, but I would guess that the latency, the most of the latency comes from the uh, MIDI to mm -hmm. uh, the pitch to MIDI conversion. I don't know what the triple play, but maybe it's five, 10 milliseconds, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it but, is but the... from there, the MIDI to audio uh, latency in, in, in Elk is like one or two milliseconds. It's very, very Okay, quick. okay. And this is the, what we can see now is the, where yeah. the, the operating system is on it, yeah. Yeah, that's the Elk board that was put into, into the guitar. When I saw this the first time and read about it, it was so that's quite innovative. That's that shows how hardware can work with software very nicely, even it's a plugin. Because often we yeah. manage it's a plugin or hardware, and now we bring this uh, together. And for Superbooth 20 Home Edition, you have something new, yeah, which brings it even more to the people, even more open up more to developers or musicians also? Yeah. The one thing that we were supposed to show in, in Berlin, and it's a bummer that we're, we can't be there, but it's, it's this one, which is, uh, we call it the blackboard. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a breakout uh, board, expansion board. Um, you can call it a lot of things, uh, but you put it on top of your, Elk Pi and gives you easy access to all the inputs and outputs um, of the Elk Pi, all the audio inputs and outputs and CV inputs and gates. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got four um, sliders and it's got a rotary encoder and a couple of um, a row of switches and LEDs and even a little OLED screen. It's a 128 by 64 pixels um, OLED mm -hmm. screen. So this was something that we originally, we made it as a development tool, because when you're developing things with the Elk Pi, you want, wish that, oh, I wish I could just connect a mini jack to it. I wish I could just control a parameter with a fader here. Um, mm -hmm. so it was this kind of generic development board with controls on it. Um, and we used it for, we used a prototype version of that for a couple of uh, uh, workshops. And people mm -hmm. were like, very, wow. I like this. Can I can I buy this? Um, <laughs> so we were like, yeah. We originally we didn't plan on, on building them and selling them, but uh, people really wanted them. So now mm -hmm. that's what we're doing. Even though it's it's primarily intended for developers. I mean, if you're just a little bit computer savvy, you can use this to build um, using any of the open source plugins that we've uh, compiled for Elk. Any kind of your your favorite synthesizer, favorite effect chain, and Effect box or synthesizer. Yeah. Can it uh, can it tell only one plugin, or you, can you even put two? No, you can have as many as you want. You okay. Can have as many. I mean, it has a it, Elk runs um, Sushi, which is a DAW uh, with mm -hmm. uh, as many tracks as you want and as many plugins on the tracks okay. as you can have. And it's got, I think it's like six um, six audio in, six audio out. So you mm -hmm. can, uh, I mean, you can do a lot of parallel effects change if you want to. So you basically can you you can create a virtual pedal board. Oh yeah, absolutely. I wish to see that many developers use this, especially uh, Sean Costello, n uh, known as Valhalla DSP. Please, <laughs> we need this. Um, yeah. And on the hardware, um, I saw or I read from your website. It has uh, two, two, uh, four audio ins, so you can mm -hmm. use it as effect box, four audio outs. So basically, it has two uh, two uh, two stereo lines here. Yeah. And uh, two fixed TV outputs. Um, so it, can you configure this TV outputs, gates outs, or how easy is this to implement to yeah. a plugin now? It, it's very easy. You can. Uh, you can basically connect CVs to uh, parameters on any plugin so that the mm -hmm. plug plugins themselves don't need to support uh, CV or gates. Okay. Uh, 
And we've also done a couple of, uh, like, for example, plugins, but conversion plugins, mm -hmm. like CV to MIDI and MIDI to CV. So another cool thing you can take, you can take any of the open source plugins and you can put our CV to MIDI um, plugin before it. And then you can use CV gates to connect any, control any plugin. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a MIDI sequencer, you can do the opposite. You can have a MIDI sequencer that outputs MIDI. You put one of our MIDI to CV um, conversion plugins, and then you can output MIDI and gate from it. Or CV so, and gate from it. so it could be used also as MIDI sequencer, right? Not Absolutely. only for audio, but also for MIDI. Also for MIDI, and it also got uh, Ableton Link support. Um, so you can, with it, you can do a pretty cool um, sequencer with just MIDI, Ableton Link, and the CV gate Tank. at the same time and synchronize. Thank you for Ableton Link. Yeah. There are tons of new hardware and nobody is implementing Ableton Link. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It's, I mean, we're hoping that people will use it because it's, it's a pretty cool feature. Um, so you, it's, if a company is there, to, you want to bring this plugin to the hardware to the Elk, um, is it allowed then to sell this plugin, uh, this uh, these products with the Elk on it, or how or how do you manage this licensing? Is it uh, you need? You mean to... for, for Elk or for? Yeah, is it paying um, to a license or? Yeah, so so we released Elk in November last year. We released Elk under a open source license. So it's a it's a GPL license, which basically means that you are free to do whatever you want with it but whatever you release with it you need to release the source code with it okay. it's kind of this copy left um, and it's similar to what use is doing with their license and it's a pretty um, common license to use that so as long as you what you're doing is i mean you can do commercial stuff with it too but usually if you do a commercial product you want to keep it closed source yeah, and if you want to release a closed source product, then you need to come to us, and then we'll talk about doing a commercial okay. like. Um, but for anyone who's just starting out, hobbyist makers who just want to do things, I mean, it's free to download. So just so order that kit and. Uh, so it's more, so it's more a open source. Uh, it's for you to give musicians, developers a tool for making more. Op this open source things to a hardware device. Yeah. That's yeah. Su super interesting. And it's nice to see how involved your company from now, from the first super booth to now, it becomes more and more light to the, to the company and their mission. Um, yeah, okay. This blackboard, this uh, blackboard is it already available or? Yeah, you, you can order it from our website now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll what? We're a whole load of them this week. So. And what is the price of it? I think the price is um, ah, is one hundred nine euro. Nineteen euro, one hundred nine euro. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you can also buy the Elk Pie in in a kit with the blackboard. Okay. Um, and we've also we also gotten a lot of requests for doing an even more. Um, affordable version because still mm -hmm. the kit with the elk pie and the blackboard is around is it 319 euros or 309 mm -hmm. um, um and we're, we're doing a lot of progress there but we will uh, also present something new um next week okay for people interested in something even more affordable so so stay tuned okay and so basically, if you want to work with it, you need a Raspberry Pi, you need the Elk board. Yeah. And, it, and, and good coding and a bit of and coding. Good coding. Um, I mean, you don't even and you passion. start out with our examples and the open source plugins, and that will mm -hmm. get you pretty far. Um, and, a, and a lot of passion. A lot of passion, yeah. Passion and patience, and maybe a little bit of, of uh, Linux uh, skills mm -hmm. also. What uh, and for the end, what is uh, what is your main mission, or what what want to see? Maybe in five years, you want to see a really big elk uh, audio thing, or 
Do you want to be to, uh, affordable and small devices or what is your mission? Our mission is, I mean, we see this as the next uh, platform for doing, like, I, I think the audio, sort of audio music tech is a little bit behind in terms of bringing everything together in terms of connectivity mm -hmm. and integration. Like, I, we see Elk as, as the platform for doing all of this, mm -hmm. to bring connected musical instruments with sort of like, like what Android was for, for mobile phones, I think. But not for music. That's our aim, what Elk should be for musical instruments. But Android is not, is not great for music apps. No, Android is not great for music apps, but Android kind of, they created this platform and then everyone mm -hmm. and their mother compiled or wrote plugin uh, apps for it. And mm -hmm. I think that's where we see, or we hope to see Elf going in the future. Okay. That it will be the, the standard platform for any kind of musical instruments. Um, Elk is is is, um, is it also made for app developers? Because of, often the, there are cool app developers who maybe are interested to bring their stuff to hardware. Are they also fi um, in your pipeline for that they receive? Um, is it also compatible with code made for apps? Or um, there is not a not a distinct app format for mm. Elk, so to speak, but it's. Uh... And that's one of the cool things that it's a Linux based distribution. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can run anything on it. Okay. Basically and interact. So if you want to write a little program that interacts with the sound engine in any way, um, in, in Python, in C++, in any other program language, um, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty adventurous. It's uh, it could be very cool if the right developers jump on it and bring the amazing plugins to it. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to see uh, the first real uh, the, the, the great developers who are trying this to make it. Okay, big thanks, Gustav. Yeah, I wish you good luck luck with uh, the new product. And maybe also, and of course, with your new products coming next week. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, nice talking to you. Thank you. And I hope that we see each other in Berlin maybe next 2021. year. 2021 will be cool. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. And um, big thanks for watching. And if you have a questions, let me know in the comments below. And big thanks. And see you soon in our next Superbooth 20 Home Edition videos. Bye.